all right students uh, so we'll continue our session on the coaxial cable so in the previous session we started uh, to check whether the fields In the previous session, uh, we started to check uh, what kind of fields a coaxial uh, line can uh, handle. And the coaxial line, we checked whether a transverse electromagnetic solution can exist on a coaxial cable. And we got that, in fact, such kind of solution can exist. And uh, where uh, your electric field will have zero component and magnetic field will have H5 component, and the wave will be propagating in Z direction. So this is what we have. And in fact, we calculated the uh, intrinsic impedance of such kind of uh, uh, medium. If it is a lossless case, we got that the characteristic impedance of this uh, uh, wave of this line, because you can apply transmission line analysis. Of course, the impedance of the wave is nothing but eta, okay? because it's a transverse electromagnetic wave. The wave impedance is nothing but eta, which is square root of uh, mu by epsilon. Okay, but the characteristic impedance, if you assume that you can define voltage and current in the transverse plane. So for that case, we got the ratio of the voltage and current uh, in the transverse plane as uh, eta by, I think uh, we got 2 pi times ln of uh, B by A. Okay, so with this way actually also uh, try to calculate the line parameters because it's a transverse electromagnetic wave you can define voltages and currents in the transverse plane so in the transverse plane so in the transverse plane uh, we can define uh, voltage and currents uh, right so we can define voltages and currents so this voltage and currents of course in the transverse plane means at a fixed z so you get V of Z and I of Z. Okay. So, and for this current, voltage and current, because it's a transmission line analysis, you definitely need to have the line parameters, which is capacitance per unit length and the inductance per unit length. So we have calculated the capacitance per unit length and the inductance per unit length in the transverse planes. So we got the answers like the capacitance per unit length is uh, 2 pi epsilon naught divided by ln of B by A. And whereas... Uh, the L value is mu naught mu divided by 2 pi times ln of B by A. Okay. So I can see that uh, I can I can write a relationship between uh, the Z naught and the C value. Okay. I can say C, the value of C. Okay. Uh, let us see. The value of C is what? C, I can write it as 2 pi times of epsilon naught. Okay. And uh, what I can do is I can bring this 2 pi to the denominator. So I get 1 by 2 pi. And I multiply with eta and eta on the numerator. Okay. So then I get ln of B by A. So you can see this is nothing but equal to the Z naught. That is, in case of free space, I mean, in case if there is not free space, in case of a lossless scenario, this is the characteristic impedance which we get. So what is eta? Eta is nothing but square root of mu by epsilon. Okay, times uh, you get epsilon, you get simply C is equal to square root of mu epsilon divided by Z naught. Okay, what about L? Can I write L as something under? Yes, you can also write L as something. L is, of course, from this relationship, you can see that because L into C is nothing but mu times of epsilon. So what is L? That is nothing but square root of by Z naught into mu epsilon. Okay, so you get L is nothing but square root of mu epsilon times Z naught. Okay. Of course, you need to get something like that. So, Ante, if you know the uh, characteristic impedance in case of lossless case, you can easily calculate the line parameter C and L by using these expressions. Okay. So, 
with this in mind let us try to calculate the conductance per unit length we already had the electric field expressions and potential expressions uh, assuming a line chart distribution okay assuming a line chart distribution we already have the potentials so of course uh, all we need is the expressions uh, that means we have the expression for potential and we have the expression for electric field from the gauss law which we use it the same expressions for deriving the capacitance so because we want to find the conductance per unit length what is this conductance parameter if you remember if you assume that there are some losses between the in the dielectric medium so dielectric medium lo losses unte because of these losses some current can flow through the dielectric medium or some power can be lost inside the dielectric medium and you can calculate it so there are two ways in which you can do it you can either uh, do it by finding you can take a volume and you can see how much power is lost inside that volume okay from the electric and magnetic fields which expressions which you have and you can do it that is one way of doing it but of course uh, then uh, because now you are taking that there are some losses inside your dielectric medium you cannot no longer have a propagation constant which is uh, a, just an imaginary number now you need to take uh, alpha also that makes uh, that analysis uh, becomes uh, difficult so here a simple way i can say if you assume that there are the dielectric medium has some conductivity sigma d then inside the dielectric medium you should have some currents conduction currents so j is equal to sigma d times of electric field because we already have the expression for electric field so the question is uh, what is the this current what is the total current that will be flowing out okay so because i am taking a a, a coaxial cable whose length is because i need a parameter per unit length so i am taking a per unit length distance okay so how much current is going through here how much current is going out and uh, so to get the current the current is nothing but the surface integral of j bar dot ds bar okay so what i want is i want to know how much current is flowing out of this from the center conductor right so because i am saying that some current is flowing in usually the current has to flow on the conductor or on the top conductor so the inner conductor or outer conductor may flow only but i'm saying some radial current can also flow out okay so how much is that current and uh, so because uh, j bar and uh, nothing but sigma times of e bar okay dot ds bar ds bar and uh, you can take a close it surface like this cylindrical surface and you can find how much total amount of radial current is going out so ek a ds bar em avutadi because it's a cylindrical surface on the cylindrical surface what changes is rho is fixed okay and uh, because we want to find how much current is going from the center conductor center conductor means outward current and twelfth na naaku teliyal kabatti center conductor dekra i will take a i will take a surface on the center conductor and i will try to find how much current is crossing through this surface so ee center conductor ki radius a kabatti so it is uh, on the surface rho is fixed phi and z this phi and z are changing so rho is fixed and is equal to a and phi is changing so you get rho d phi so rho plus lo a substitute cheyali and in case of z z is changing from 0 to 1 and phi is changing from 0 to 2 pi so that is integration you have to do 0 to 2 pi and 0 to 1 ds bar and you have to write a d phi uh, a d phi times of uh, uh, dz okay this is what you have to do dot of course this is ds the vector kabatti radial outward vector kabatti you need to take rho cap your electric field j and n t sigma times of electric field your electric field already have a rho cap component so when you substitute it you basically end up because your electric field is not a function of phi or neither it is z and of course ikkada uh, static dependency iskuntamo z kabatti 0 to 1 you get simply 1 okay phi dependency led kabatti a into 0 to 2 pi you get a 2 pi a so 2 pi a into j ante it is nothing but at sigma equal to a 
because you are finding electric field you are doing this integration at sigma on the surface sigma equal to a sigma ga and rho equal to a surface meda chestunnar kabatti so rho is equal to a surface meda electric field anta calculate chestamu and you substitute that here you get the answer for the current that is going out of the surface ante ee conductor nunchi radial ga outward anta current velthundi ante this much amount of current is going out so what i want is uh, to find the conductance i need to find what is the current divided by the voltage to get the conductance so i have the voltage expression what is the potential here i know already okay so uh, i have means this is your potential expression right so if you substitute this potential there and if you divide this with the current you got a current divided by the potential gives you the amount of conductance you can see the amount of uh, g conductance is nothing but 2 pi that sigma d divided by ln of b by a you can see this ln of b by a is playing a very major role here okay prati parameter lo ni ln b by a vastundi and that is important for a coaxial line okay so the observation which i can make here is because the capacitance which we have derived is nothing but 2 pi epsilon naught of ln of b by a and the conductance which we got is 2 pi sigma dv of ln of b by a so i can write a relationship that g is nothing but c times of uh, sigma d by epsilon okay so here first of all you need to understand here is e g anna parameter man ela kattam ante we thought that maybe inside your dielectric medium there are conductive losses but there also can be other kinds of losses called polarization losses let me talk about it next slides lo maatladtanu so uh, so ikkada naku g ante nothing but if i know the capacitance per unit length parameter i can simply multiply it with sigma d and divided by epsilon not then i get the answer for uh, uh what i can say i get the answer for the conductance per unit length okay so that is g okay so what you can do is you can uh, rearrange it a little bit okay i can put omega somewhere here okay i can put uh, i can take g by omega c that gives me sigma d by omega c if you remember that sigma d by omega c sigma by omega c is what we call as loss tangent okay so g by omega c can be also be written as tan delta d of course this loss tangent is arising because of uh, a finite conductivity inside your medium ne medium lo dielectric medium lo kontha finite conductivity undadam valla ee loss tangent arise avuthun anukunte so i can say if i know the loss tangent ante naaku materials manufacture chese vallu loss tangent icharu ankonde from the loss tangent i can easily find the conductivity per unit length by using this equation so g by omega c is nothing but tan delta tan of delta d okay so at a given frequency if i know the capacitance per unit length i can easily calculate what is the conductance per unit length for this case also okay so as i was previously saying ante permittivity annadi complex number eppudu teeskuntam ani cheppanante if you remember uh, when we are dealing with the wave theory uh, the permittivity was taken as a complex number and uh, the complex notation was taken when i had to deal with the finite conductivity inside the materials ante material lopala kontha finite ante konni free electrons emanna unnai ankonde appudu it will have some finite conductivity and because of this finite conductivity you will have some losses inside your dielectric medium ani cheppan okay and if you remember we have modeled the dielectric something like this we got epsilon naught is equal to epsilon naught into epsilon r minus uh, j divided by j by sigma omega epsilon i think we got j omega divided by epsilon naught okay i think this is what uh, we had okay i sorry i think ikkada epsilon naught into epsilon r times of 1 minus uh, j divided by omega epsilon okay so this is what uh, we had uh, okay when uh, we were deriving that equation so if you remember a del cross of h and a we got something like this j omega epsilon naught into epsilon r into the electric field plus sigma times of electric field so what i have done i have taken j omega epsilon naught common okay and what i got i got uh, epsilon r plus sigma divided by uh, j omega epsilon naught times e bar okay so dinne en rasamu minus j divided by sigma omega uh, epsilon naught en raskunnam 
అండ్ ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ ఇక్కడ ఐ రోడ్ దిస్ ఎస్ ఇఫ్ ఐ టేక్ ఈవెన్ ఎప్సిల్ ఆర్ కామన్ ఎప్సిల్ ఆర్ టైమ్స్ ఆఫ్ వన్ మైనస్ జే బై సిగ్మా బై ఒమైగా యూ గెట్ ఎప్సిల్ నాట్ ఇట్ ఎప్సిల్ ఆర్ ఇస్ ఎప్సిల్ ఆర్ టైమ్స్ ఎలక్ట్రిక్ ఫీల్డ్ ఐ కాల్ దిస్ వన్ యాజ్ యువర్ కాంప్లెక్స్ పెర్మిటివిటీ ఇఫ్ యూ రిమెంబర్ ఓకే సో అండి మొత్తం పెరామీటర్ని ఎప్సిల్ ఆర్ అని తీసుకున్నాం అండ్ దిస్ ఇస్ వాట్ వీ రోడ్ యాజ్ కాంప్లెక్స్ పెర్మిటివిటీ so i think that usually when you have losses inside your medium your permittivity will be like a factor of uh, some real part with some imaginary part also aithe losses anavi asthamani finite conductivity valle kaakapochu okay inside your medium okay so inside your medium because there are tiny dipoles that are forming inside your medium okay so these are polarization vectors as i told you electric field uh, పెరమిటివిటీ uh, డిరైవ్ చేస్తున్నప్పుడు ఐ ఐ గేవ్ యూ ద ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్ ఐ ఐ గేవ్ యూ ద కాన్సెప్ట్ లైక్ ఇన్ సైడ్ ద మెటీరియల్ డైపోల్స్ ఎ స్మాల్ టైనీ డైపోల్స్ ఆర్ ద పోలరైజేషన్ విల్ బీ ఫాల్ ఫార్మింగ్ అవుట్ సో బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ద థర్మల్ లాసెస్ వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ ఈజ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫ్రిక్షన్ మాలిక్యులర్ ఫ్రిక్షన్ వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ ఈజ్ ద పోలరైజేషన్ కెన్ బీ ఆల్టరింగ్ అండ్ ఆల్ అండ్ దాట్ కెన్ క్రియేట్ సమ్ అమౌంట్ ఆఫ్ లాస్ ఓకే సో అలా ఉన్నప్పుడు కూడా ఏంటంటే ద పెరమిటివిటీ కెన్ బికమ్ కాంప్లెక్స్ when there is polarization loss also and the molecules much friction on them all because of that you might lose some energy because when you are varying your uh, signal with time the polarization has to adjust with respect to the changing electric field so in that case uh, because of this molecular friction you can lose some power so for example distilled water iskunnar ankonde if uh, distilled water actually heats up in micro oven even though there is no conductivity ante inside your distilled water there are no there are no free electrons ante ikkada em conductivity undadu even there is no free electrons inside your distilled water still the water heats up why it is heating up ante it is not because there is some finite conductivity or there is thermal energy that is coming out it is only because inside the water the molecules Uh, when they are rotating uh, front and back because of a time varying electric field that is creating a molecular friction and uh, the, the the energy is lost in that way it is lost in terms of uh, heat so so andukane endante eppudaina whenever for example if there is no molecular friction or polarization losses in live ankonde if 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 the losses are only because of the conductivity then your permittivity expression will look like this ante kada endaku rasan epsilon not into epsilon r times of 1 minus sigma by omega epsilon okay so if you multiply this you basically get uh, epsilon minus uh, sigma by omega j times of sigma by omega so that is what is written here so ante if you have only conductive losses if you have only conductive losses uh, one second okay so if your losses are only because of the dielectric because of the conductivity and material lo conductivity undatam valla ante konni free electrons undatam valla say your dielectric medium is having some amount of uh, conductivity then this is your permittivity expression right but if you have both ante for example if you have polarization losses ante material lo polarization uh, molecular frictions valla cha polarization losses unnai atlane finite conductivity na free electrons kuda unnai ankonde then the overall permittivity is something like this okay you have epsilon in place of epsilon you write epsilon minus j epsilon double dash and uh, this epsilon double dash is because of this loss is because of uh, uh, the molecular friction in fact you can also model it as a 
some finite amount of conductivity so i can say that uh, the total uh, permittivity can have two parts one is a real part okay and the imaginary part can have two parts one is because of the conductivity sigma by omega and other n is epsilon double dash which can be because of the uh, molecular or polarization losses okay so if you write the general expression for uh, epsilon uh, means the uh, epsilon uh, is because of both conductive and polarization losses okay then if you ask me what is the expression for loss tangent the expression for loss tangent is always the ratio between the imaginary part of your permittivity to the real part of your permittivity you can see because if there are no molecular frictions if this be, this goes to zero and there will be only conductive losses and you again come back to the same expression sigma by omega epsilon okay which is what we had before for the loss tangent but in general okay because in general you can have losses because of both the molecular frictions and as well as uh, the uh, material properties of the uh, means the conductivity of the medium also so the general expression is like this so the loss tangent simply gives you the combined effect means it gives you the combined effect of both the molecular frictions as well as the conductivity also so if you consider that right and if say for example particularly like materials like teflon and konitis kundontam which we usually use in your coaxial cables for them the conductivity is zero sigma nal chala takku untadi okay you usually have uh, losses only because of this molecular friction so the tan delta is nothing but uh, that imaginary part divided by the real part okay and the loss tangent okay usually is very small at microwave frequencies but that loss tangent will tell you how much uh, uh, conductance is there because g by omega c is nothing but tan of that loss tangent so in a day usually the most of the textbooks end ante ee paina dash pete convention use cheyadam common ga vaadaru andra epsilon r ne convention vaadtaru so andukane ade convention so andukane meek first teach chesina appudu kuda ide convention vaadanu so epsilon r see the complex permittivity complex relative permittivity or effective permittivity is nothing but epsilon r times of 1 minus j tan delta so ikka tan delta anadi this tan delta includes both the effect of uh, uh, losses that are arising because of finite conductivity as well as the losses that arise because of the molecular uh, frictions and uh, the polarization losses also so ee rendu untai kabatti so this includes both polarization losses and uh, conduct the uh, conductor losses okay inside uh, dielectric medium right inside the dielectric the rondo losses ni account chest the tan delta right so that gives you so from there you can simply if you know the tan delta you can get the complex permittivity expression like this right so and in it uh, if at all a manufacturer gives you these three values he gives you the what is the epsilon r ante what what in a material ki complex permittivity appude em unnanna manufacturer entante he will give you what is the permittivity real part epsilon r ante that is a real part and he gives you the tan delta okay loss tangent is there so and uh, you can uh, maybe he can also give you in case of lossless what is the impedance of the line he will also give you because it is easy to calculate from the line parameters so it is simply eta by, by ln of b by a kabatti depending upon how we have manufactured it he will give you the value of this z not and epsilon r and tan delta from that you can easily calculate line parameters like this right so l is nothing but that z not times of square root of mu epsilon and capacitance is nothing but square root of mu epsilon divided by z not and what about g g is nothing but omega c times of the tan delta function okay so if you know the loss tangent you can easily find the conductance per unit length so the all that is left is to find the resistance per unit length so to calculate the resistance per unit length okay so here is an example before calculating the resistance per unit length so here you can see a teflon material is used for a coaxial line okay so in the middle a material that is used is teflon with permittivity refractive of 2.1 and for a lossless line uh, the freak uh, the the impedance is given as 50 ohm if the lot tan delta loss tangent is given as 0.01 and the frequency of operation is given as 10 gigahertz then what is the value of uh, l c and g okay so the value of l is nothing but square root of mu epsilon divided into z not and the value of capacitance is uh, square root of mu epsilon divided by z not okay and what is z not uh, of course 
Z naught is given here, and what is the G? G is equal to omega C times of uh, tan delta. So it is 2 pi F times of C times of tan delta. So you need to calculate the value of L, okay? Uh, because it's given, uh, it is only an epsilon naught. There is no mu r. So this simply becomes uh, square root of mu naught epsilon naught, square root of epsilon naught, and this becomes square root of uh, mu naught epsilon naught, square root of epsilon naught, okay? So under L and N ratio, uh, this is nothing but 1 by C under 1 by 3 into 10 to the power of 8. Square root of epsilon R is 2.1 times of 50. This is L and uh, the C value is 1 by 3 into 10 to the power of 8. Okay. Uh, square root of 2.1 uh, divided by 50. Okay. So this uh, this is the values of course the units are henry per meter and this is farad per meter so once you get the value of c here the values are given here after calculation so you can substitute that value of c here and we had the value for tan delta and the frequency is given as 10 gigahertz you substitute and you get the value of uh, g also okay so this is how you can calculate the line parameters for this coaxial cable so what about the resistance per unit length how do you calculate the resistance per unit length under if I take the coaxial cable like this, okay. So I know that there are two conductors here, the top one and the bottom one. And in order to calculate uh, the resistance per unit length, I'm going to go with an approach here. So if you remember the perturbation method, which we have used, okay, perturbation method, Vada Mokati, a method intent, attenuation constant calculate chat and wave guides, slow perturbation method of Japan. So if you remember the, the attenuation constant on your line is nothing but PL of zero. What is PL of zero? That is, this is the power loss per unit length. Okay, this is power loss per unit length. So how do you calculate this power loss per unit length? And we will calculate it like this. If you remember, we have done it like RS by two times of uh, the line integral of uh, the surface current. Okay. the surface current square times of dl okay this is how we have done it in the waveguide so in the same way we have to find the loss per unit length and if you know what is uh, the power the two what is the numerator is power loss per unit length uh, say z equal to zero and uh, what is p naught p naught is the power that is entering or power uh, the time average power that is flowing in at z equal to zero in lossless case for lossless case so in fact if you remember the vibration method this is what we have done so p naught and and you take a lossless scenario you take a lossless scenario and ask myself how much power is entering through this coaxial cable how much power will be entering if i assume the maximum current that is going is i naught okay if the current that is going is i naught then the power is nothing but the time average power is nothing but half times of real part of uh, v cross uh, I mean, not V cross, V and I conjugate, right? So because on the line, we are assuming there is only one wave that is propagating. So V and I are related by Z naught. So this answer will be half times of Z naught square times of I naught square. Okay. But what is the power loss per unit length? That is what I want to know. Say, for example, to know the power loss per unit length, we know that we can model our transmission line with this kind of uh, circuit, right? We can model it with this kind of circuit. In this analysis, because we are only considering losses because of the conductor, we'll we'll make uh, we'll assume that there are no losses because of uh, dielectric medium. So let us assume this goes to uh, uh, zero, not zero. Maybe it is not there. Means this element is not there. Okay, so conductivity is going to infinity. I'm sorry, the conductivity is zero. So this element is not there. If we assume that, then uh, what happens? Okay, I mean, the conductivity is going to zero, means the resistance is going to zero, means it's an open circuit. Okay, so if this is going to zero, and there is no element, element ledu. Okay, lena pudu per unit length, so this is for some length delta z. Okay, say per unit length uh, parameters gavati. Overall, ga anta resistive loss on the end, overall ga inside this whole network, there is only one resistance r, and that is the only element that can create loss. So how much loss you can get per unit length and day, it is nothing but half times of that resistance into I naught square, right, from the circuit theory. So 
if i take these two parameters and i substitute in my alpha c formula you can see if i take the ratio i get alpha c is equal to r by 2 z not so and what is the value of r so if you want to calculate the resistance per unit length parameter for a coaxial cable first it is two times of z not of alpha c and notion and z not and z not is a characteristic impedance when you are dealing with a lossless case okay what is alpha c idi manam calculate cheyal we need to calculate if if i know the attenuation constant on a coaxial cable then i can easily calculate what is the resistance per unit length for that coaxial cable so all i am left is to find this attenuation constant we will find that attenuation constant slowly okay in the coming slides we will do it but the complete thing which we have here is what are the parameters at last the parameters nanna so for a coaxial line so for a coaxial line these are the parameters so these parameters you need to remember for solving the problems so the for a coaxial line z not is nothing but uh, eta by uh, 2 pi times of uh, ln of p by a is the first equation which you have to remember then the capacitance per unit length parameter is like this square root of mu epsilon divided by z not and the capacitance inductance parameter is like this square root of mu epsilon times z not and uh, the conductance is omega c times of uh, tan delta and the resistance per unit length parameter is 2 times of uh, z not of alpha c okay so these are the things which you need to remember as far as for this semester right uh, for the exam purpose also so once you have these values you can easily find the line parameters because once we have the line parameters it is always easy to calculate uh, Uh, what kind of uh, modes will propagate and how what will be the attenuation constant and all we can easily calculate all these things okay so with this uh, thing we had the tem mode propagating in a coaxial cable so the question is whether there are any higher order modes that propagate in a coaxial cable so coaxial cable me the te gaani tm modes gaani propagate avta hai anadi analyze cheyal so for doing the analysis we have to do what so okavela te modes and te modes exist avava leda ani telusukovali ante transverse electric kabatti you need to solve helmholtz equation for hz component adhe transverse magnetic modes unnai leda teliyali ante you need to solve helmholtz equations for ez component so once we solve those equations if we get a solution in cylindrical coordinate system then we get a condition right usually manaki konni boundary condition substitute chesina podu we get conditions for the cut off frequencies adhe jarigindi if you remember rectangular wave gate man uh, first uh, transverse electric modes ki we applied the helmholtz equation for hz component so, and we got solution like something uh, uh, we got some sign uh, m pi by a times of uh, okay ila vachindi ante solution raataniki reason enti ante because uh, there when we applied the boundary conditions boundary conditions apply chesina appudu we had the condition that k x should be equal to m pi by a and ky should be equal to n pi by b and it la conditions vachche from those conditions we had a condition that the cut off frequency cut off wave number should be equal to m pi by a plus n pi by b whole square then only our wave can exist in the same way you can also solve the same differential equations again for ez and hz component to see whether there is tm and te modes uh, and uh, we can uh, apply the boundary conditions okay so i have so say for example i have done it for a te mode oka okay, te mode teeskone okay daniki uh, solution find out chesi boundary conditions apply chesa ankonde what are the boundary conditions ante the boundary condition is like this at rho is equal to a the tangential component should be zero for te modes already ez ana zero teeskuntam so next boundary condition em vastadi ante the e5 component the e5 component at rho is equal to a should be equal to zero అలాగే ఈ ఫైవ్ కాంపనెంట్ ఎట్ రో ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు బి షుడ్ ఆల్సో బి ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో ఇఫ్ యూ అప్లై దిస్ బౌండరీ కండిషన్స్ యూ గెట్ అన్ ఈక్వేషన్ లైక్ దిస్ ఇన్ టర్మ్స్ ఆఫ్ కేసీ కేసీలో ఇలాంటి ఈక్వేషన్ వస్తుంది వేర్ యూ కెన్ సీ బికాస్ యూఆర్ సాల్వింగ్ ఇట్ ఇన్ సిలిండ్రికల్ కోఆర్డినేట్ సిస్టమ్ యూ గెట్ బెసల్స్ ఫంక్షన్స్ ఆల్సో అండ్ ఇన్ దాట్ సొల్యూషన్ బెసల్స్ ఫంక్షన్లో కూడా మనం సిలిండ్రికల్ వేవ్ సర్కులర్ వేవ్ గైడ్స్ డీల్ చేస్తున్నప్పుడు ఓన్లీ ఫస్ట్ ఆర్డర్ బెసల్స్ ఫంక్షన్సే తీసుకున్నాం జే అని ఫంక్షన్స్ తీసుకున్నాం బట్ వీ నెగ్లెక్టెడ్ వై ఫంక్షన్స్ why did we neglect y functions because at the center because when uh, the y y y of x functions are navi they start from infinity and they fall down okay 
బట్ బేసిక్లీ యూఆర్ హియర్ యూఆర్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ టు స్టార్ట్ అట్ రో ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో రో ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో దగ్గర నుంచి ఫీల్డ్స్ ఉండవు బికాస్ ఇన్ ఏ లాస్లెస్ కేస్ ఇఫ్ దిస్ ఈస్ అ పర్ఫెక్ట్ ఎలక్ట్రిక్ కండక్టర్ అండ్ దిస్ ఈస్ అ పర్ఫెక్ట్ ఎలక్ట్రిక్ కండక్టర్ ద ఫీల్డ్స్ ఇన్ సైడ్ దిస్ కండక్టర్ ఆర్ జీరో దెర్ ఆర్ ఓన్లీ ఫీల్డ్స్ ఇన్ దిస్ రియన్ సో యూఆర్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ టు డీల్ విత్ కేస్ వేర్ ఎక్స్ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు జీరో ఆర్ దిస్ ఫ్యాక్టర్ ద ఫ్యాక్టర్ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు జీరో అంటే కేసీ ఇన్ టు రో అన్నది జీరో ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు జీరో కేసు మనం ఈ సినారీలో డీల్ చేయం so you can also have solutions which are in the format of y also and a second order bessel's functions kuda solutions avachu so rendu adlo edu avutadi annadi boundary conditions apply chesi you need to solve them so when you apply the boundary conditions you basically end up with an equation which looks like this so ee equation ki solution edaithe vastado that gives me the value of the cut off frequency okay so the cut off frequency say for example if i take particularly te11 mode okay te11 mode teeskunte T11 టీ వన్ వన్ మోడ్కి ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ ఈక్వేషన్ ఐ గెట్ ఎ కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ సొల్యూషన్ అండ్ అప్రాక్సిమేట్ సొల్యూషన్ లైక్ దిస్ టూ బై ఏ ప్లస్ బి ఓకే సో ఇఫ్ ఐ చూస్ టీ వన్ వన్ మోడ్ ఓకే దెన్ ఐ గెట్ ఎ సొల్యూషన్ లైక్ దిస్ సో యూ మైట్ ఆస్క్ మీ దట్ ఎవర్ సో ఇస్ దిస్ ద నెక్స్ట్ హైయర్ ఆర్డర్ మోడ్ అంటే ఎస్ దిస్ టీ వన్ వన్ మోడ్ ఇస్ ద నెక్స్ట్ హైయర్ ఆర్డర్ మోడ్ దట్ యూ గెట్ ఆఫ్టర్ టీ ఎం వేవ్ okay we can also do the same kind of analysis for uh, tm modes and also we can get an equation like this to get the cut off frequencies but usually we don't uh, follow that path because uh, it is not necessary because you might ask me why are we not going to are we not going to discuss the mathematics of uh, the modes right so when we're dealing with rectangular wave gate we have dealt with a lot of mathematics we solved the dif- differential equations and we try to apply the boundary conditions to the solutions and we try to see what kind of modes are present and what are not present and uh, what are the cut off frequencies and all okay but for the coaxial cable i'm not going to stress on the analysis because it is not needed because we we don't want to operate our coaxial cable in higher order modes because once i have this golden mode that is tm mode that is propagating on my coaxial cable that is the mode which i want to operate in i don't want to operate at higher order modes because i definitely know for higher order modes uh, the phase velocity becomes a function of frequency and there will be issues with the dispersion and all so it's always better to operate in a uh, the, the, this uh, coaxial line in a transverse electromagnetic mode so what i want is because for a transverse electromagnetic mode there is no cut off frequency so you, they, it can uh, propagate at any frequency but once you cross this uh, t because the next higher order mode you get is t11 mode okay there can be other modes also you can also have tm01 modes or 10 modes and so on tm11 modes but these all other modes come after even those cut off frequencies will be even greater than the cut off frequency of t11 mode so the first first of, uh, mode that occurs after uh, tm propagation is uh, this t11 mode and the cut off frequency of it is because kc for t11 mode is nothing but 2 by a plus b from there i can see cut off frequency is nothing but 2 pi c of t11 mode times uh, square root of mu naught epsilon and the square of mu r epsilon r is equal to 2 by a plus b so from here i can write the expression for the cut off frequency of t10 mode means t11 mode is something like this means after this cut off frequency means if you are operating say you are operating at this frequency at this frequency you are inside your wave inside your coaxial cable the wave can either propagate as a tm wave or it can also propagate as a t11 mode also so the energy can propagate in both modes but if you are operating at this frequency your energy will propagate only in one one mode that is tm mode so because this transverse electromagnetic mode is our uh, interest because we can have many advantages with it no dispersion and we can apply uh, we have this thing like um, we can deal with voltage and currents and transmission line analysis can be applied so we definitely want don't want to lose that uh, edge of uh, Uh, dealing with higher order modes we don't want to move into the uh, frequency domain where we have to deal with higher order modes so this is the cut off i can say for a coaxial cable this is the this limits our operation though you are uh, you are using a tm mode i can say that this uh, frequency cut off frequency will limit the maximum op frequency for which you will be operating 
because if you cross this frequency uh, you'll get higher order modes then uh, you don't want to deal with such kind of modes so what is the maximum operable frequency for a coaxial line is limited by this higher order mode cutoff frequency so the maximum frequency can be written as c times divided by pi times of square root of mu by epsilon 1 by a plus b okay so i can see that this number is again dependent upon this uh, i can take say for example as an as an example i have taken a cable uh, rg142 coaxial cable whose dimensions are given here the value of a is 0 0.035 uh, inches and b is 0 0.016 uh, inches and say for example the dielectric uh, is given as epsilon or 2.2 i think it's teflon so what the question is what is the highest usable frequency before te11 mode can propagate so the maximum uh, frequency is nothing but c divided by pi times of mu r is 1 and square root of epsilon r is 2.2 and this you have 1 by a plus b okay so you can put the values of a and b you need to convert these values into meters and you can put it so can anyone tell me what is the maximum frequency you'll get for this problem so c is uh, 3 into 10 to the power of 8 uh, divided by pi times of square root of 2.2 and 1 by a plus b because it's all in inches okay so i can say it is 1 5 1 so 0 0.151 inches huh? so how much it is 95.7 gigahertz 94 ah huh? 95.7 95.7 okay okay so you need to get an answer something around it 95.7 gigahertz if you can someone else also confirm andra ke vachinda any other student okay all right then um, i'll assume that that is a right answer uh, so you can see that you can substitute it in these expressions and you can see what is the maximum frequency at which you can operate okay so what i have done here is i have tried to write this uh, because we had the equation that kc is equal to 2 by a plus b i have multiplied with a on both sides then i get 2 divided by 1 plus b by a okay so because you multiply with a on both sides i can divide a here so that becomes 1 divided by a okay so that is what i have so wh why did i do it is because i want to draw a plot between b by a and kc into a okay so the kc is nothing but it gives me uh, and kc can be written as uh, the cutoff frequency 2 pi fc into square root of mu epsilon rasko chatlaga or kc can also be written as 2 pi by lambda c and you can basically what i'm doing is for a given cut of wavelength okay so this kc is nothing but i can write 2 pi a divided by lambda okay so nen teeskuna e ana radius okay nen teeskuna wire inner wire yokka radius how many wavelengths more it is greater than the cut of frequency at cut of frequency kante you can see uh, the thing here is uh, if i take uh, a if i take a a okay if i take a, a which is uh, say for example we'll do something like this so kc into a annadi one ostundante meaning endo chuddam if kc into a is one what does it mean that means you have uh, 2 pi fc into square root of mu epsilon into a say mu naught epsilon naught into square root of mu r epsilon r into a is equal to 1 okay that means uh, you have a cutoff frequency okay you have a cutoff frequency which which uh, which is nothing but fc is equal to 1 by 
2 pi uh, square root of mu naught epsilon naught of course this becomes uh, c divided by square root of mu r epsilon r divided by a wasthundi. okay that becomes your cutoff frequency so when i say kc into a is equal to 1 okay or you can also say that kc is equal to 1 and you can say 2 pi by lambda c into a is equal to 1 that means your cutoff frequency is simply or cutoff wavelength is simply 2 pi by a and together or 2 pi into a and it is the circumference circumference of your inner conductor and if so if your uh, kc okay if your kc if you are under the circumference and the wavelength comparable and then you operate just in a wavelength the cutoff frequency key could have difference into John I could be by a ratio this can go second and different values of b by a substitute Jason obviously b by a one this can on quantity that means what the outer conductor is falling onto the inner conductor when that happens uh, then KC is where simply becomes equal to a KC into a another one I put right? but the extreme under b by a ratio one can take extreme values pinch kundu village so then b by a ratio value pinch kundu village with the what is happening so b by a ratio pinch the non meaning and then if i am increasing b by a is greater than one that means i am slowly increasing the distance between these two conductors here on the conductors major door and bench the non so for a given radius of a and then this kuna a and a radius key okay if i am trying to increase the outer radius what is happening do you think the cutoff frequency is decreasing or do you think the cutoff frequency will increase? Increase. Okay, so you can see that as I'm going for higher and higher values, this KC into A and a number and then I get A fixes and unquote. If I fix A, okay, if I fix A, okay, then uh, as I'm increasing okay as i'm increasing b by a value okay so value increase yes i got the a fixes and anna so a fixes and gabati kc into a and a value can the body both in the right kc into a can the drop out the a is fixed value okay but if i increase b by a ratio the kc into a product is decreasing so kc into a product decrease out not meaning anti decrease out not a cutoff frequency the cutoff frequency is decreasing or I can say the cutoff wavelength is increasing so KC into A is dropping down so that means uh, KC into A drop out in the end your uh, your uh, circumference okay your circumference and KC into A is in becoming a number less than one that means I can say that 2 pi a is less than lambda c and together and then we gain your within and then we operate just a wave frequency the graph cut off wavelength country cut off wavelength is more than the circumference you have for your uh, inner conductor the inner conductor going to circumference contain a cut off wave number shall have the matter cut off frequency so the annual limo within that those frequencies cannot propagate so your cut off frequency is basically getting down okay so as your b by a ratio is increasing what is happening is your cutoff frequency slowly decreases that is what in this plot you can see okay and can you plot end end for a fixed value of a so i'm fixing a value of a and i'm asking you can i increase the cutoff frequency i think that the naki din but in this in that a naku it bad or an ondali and a angel what is the way in which i can put this values and then i bandwidth pencil and condi how can i increase this bandwidth Should I take uh, and a b by a ratio pet the number this call should b by a be large or b by a should be small small right so b by a should be small and the outer radius skinny and inner radius key outer radius key much on a door on another it should be very small that is what i'm saying so if i take uh, b by a is a small number say for example i take it is 1.5 or something that means simply b is 1.5 times of a okay it is not so much big okay so b is so 
దానివల్ల ఏంటంటే యువర్ కండక్టర్ ఇస్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ క్లోజ్ సెకండ్ కండక్టర్ అనేది చాలా దగ్గరగా ఉన్నట్టు సో ఇలా ఉండటం వల్ల సరే బాగానే ఉంది సార్ అయితే లెట్ ఎస్ టేక్ ఏ రేషియో బీ బై ఏ ఇస్ వెరీ స్మాల్ బీ బై ఏ స్మాల్ నెంబర్ తీసుకుందాం తీసుకుంటే ప్రాబ్లం ఏంటి ఈజ్ డూ యూ థింక్ ఈజ్ దర్ ఎనీ ప్రాబ్లమ్ అంటే ఎస్ వీ హ్యావ్ వేరియస్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ హియర్ ద ఫస్ట్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఈజ్ విత్ ద క్యారెక్టర్స్టిక్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఓకే ఐ కెన్ సే జెడ్ నాట్ ఇఫ్ యూ రిమెంబర్ ద క్యారెక్టర్స్టిక్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఈక్వేషన్ ఈజ్ గివెన్ బై ఈటా బై టూ బై టైమ్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎలన్ ఆఫ్ బీ బై ఏ ఓకే సో ఇఫ్ ఐ డిక్రీస్ బీ బై ఏ రేషియో ఓకే బీ బై రేషియోని వన్ చేశాను అనుకోండి ఇఫ్ బీ బై ఏ ఇస్ వన్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ దెన్ యూ కెన్ సీ జెడ్ నాట్ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు జీరో అంటే ఇఫ్ యూఆర్ క్లోజ్ టు వన్ అంటే వన్కి బాగా దగ్గరగా ఉన్నారు అనుకోండి యువర్ క్యారెక్టర్స్టిక్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఈజ్ అ వెరీ స్మాల్ వాల్యూ ఓకే సో యూ నీడ్ టు డీల్ విత్ అన్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ క్యారెక్టర్స్టిక్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ విచ్ ఈస్ అ వెరీ స్మాల్ వాల్యూ ఉంటే ఉండనే ఏమంటే సార్ స్మాల్ వాల్యూస్ దానివల్ల వచ్చే ప్రాబ్లం ఏంటి క్యారెక్టర్స్టిక్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ అంటే ఇఫ్ యువర్ క్యారెక్టర్స్టిక్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఈజ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అ వెరీ స్మాల్ వాల్యూ దెన్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు డీల్ విత్ లోడ్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ ఆల్సో వెరీ స్మాల్ అండ్ ద మ్యాచింగ్ విల్ బికమ్ వెరీ డిఫికల్ట్ ఓకే సో సో వాట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు డూ హియర్ అంటే ఈ క్యారెక్టర్స్టిక్ ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఒకటే కాదు దెర్ ఆర్ ఆల్సో అదర్ ఇష్యూస్ విత్ దిస్ సో వన్ థింగ్ ఐ కెన్ నో ఈజ్ టీ వన్ జీరో మోడ్ ఒక టీ టీ వన్ వన్ మోడ్ రాకుండా ఓన్లీ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్స్ ఎలక్ట్రో మ్యాగ్నెటిక్ వే ప్రాపగేట్ అవ్వాలంటే ఐ నీడ్ టు మెయింటైన్ ఏ బీ బై రేషియో విచ్ ఎస్ స్మాల్ బట్ ఐ కెన్ సీ సంథింగ్ సో ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ చూడండి సెంటర్ కండక్టర్స్ ఏం తీసుకున్నానన్న బట్ ఐల్ టేక్ టూ కో ఎగ్జిల్ కేబుల్స్ దిస్ ఈజ్ వన్ అండ్ దిస్ ఈజ్ వన్ సో ఈ రెండు కేసెస్లోని ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ ద సెంటర్ వన్ డస్ నాట్ లుక్ ద సేమ్ బట్ మేబీ నేను అంత అద్భుతంగా డ్రా చేయలేదు బట్ లెట్ మీ ట్రై అగైన్ రెండు ఆల్మోస్ట్ ఒకే రేడియస్లో ఉన్నట్టు ఉన్నాయి సో లెట్ మీ టేక్ ఏ సినారియో వేర్ యువర్ కండక్టర్ ఇస్ క్లోజ్ అండ్ ఒక సినారియో వేర్ యువర్ కండక్టర్ ఇస్ ఫార్ ఓకే సో ఇవి రెండు సేమ్ సెంటర్ రేడియస్ సేమ్ నన్న రెండు వాటికి నేనే ఓకే బట్ దిస్ వన్ ద బీ ఇస్ దిస్ ఇస్ బీ వన్ అన్నాం ఇది బీ టూ అన్నాం ఈ కేసులో ఏంటి అంటే మీ కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ చాలా ఎక్కువ ఉంటుంది ఈ కేసులో కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ సారీ ఈ కేసులో కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ బాగా తక్కువ ఉంటుంది బట్ ఈ కేసులో కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ చాలా ఎక్కువ ఉంటుంది అంతేనా రైట్ సారీ బీ బై ఏ రేషియో కాబట్టి ఓకే సో ఓకే రెండు కేసెస్లోని ఏ కేసులో డూ యూ థింక్ ఫర్ అంటే ఇది బీ బై రేషియో బట్ చెప్పాను ఇందాక బట్ దట్ ఈస్ ఫర్ కేసి ఇన్ టు ఏ ఓకే సో కెన్ యూ టెల్ మీ రెండు కేసెస్లోని దేనికి కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ బాగా తక్కువ ఉంటుంది అంటారు సో లెట్ ఎస్ సి అంటే ఇక్కడ ఏ బికాస్ యువర్ కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ ఈజ్ యాక్చువల్లీ టూ డివైడెడ్ బై ఏ ప్లస్ బి కాబట్టి ఓకే సో ఇక్కడ కేసి ఇంటూ సో ఇక్కడ రెండాటికి కేసి ఏ ఒకటే నాన్న ఓకే సో కేసి ఫర్ ద ఫస్ట్ కేసు ఈజ్ టూ బై ఏ ప్లస్ బి వన్ సెకండ్ కేసు ఈజ్ కేసి టూ ఈజ్ టూ బై ఏ ప్లస్ బి టూ ఓకే సో ఈ రెండాటికి ఏది పెద్ద నెంబర్ అన్నది క్వశ్చన్ ఓకే సో బికాస్ బి వన్ ఈజ్ ఎ స్మాలర్ నెంబర్ కంపేర్ టు బి టూ ఓకే సో దిస్ బి నెంబర్ బి టూ బి సో కేసి టూ బికమ్స్ ఈవెన్ స్మాలర్ దాన్ కేసి వన్ సో డెఫినెట్లీ దిస్ దిస్ డివైస్ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు హ్యావ్ హయర్ కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ కంపేర్ టు దిస్ వన్ ఓకే దిస్ విల్ హ్యావ్ ఈవెన్ లోవర్ కట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ సో దిస్ ఈస్ ఫార్ మోర్ బెటర్ టు యూస్ బట్ ఇక్కడ చూడండి ఒక ఇష్యూ ఏంటి అంటే ఇక్కడ ఇన్నర్ అండ్ అవుటర్ కండక్టర్కి మధ్య డిస్టెన్స్ చాలా దగ్గరగా ఉంది ఇక్కడ ఇన్నర్ అండ్ అవుటర్ కండక్టర్ మధ్య డిస్టెన్స్ దూరంగా ఉంది సో కండక్టర్స్ మధ్య డిస్టెన్స్ వల్ల ఏమన్నా ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ అవుతుందా డూ యూ థింక్ ఎనీథింగ్ గెట్ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్డ్ బట్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ద డిస్టెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ ద కండక్టర్స్ అంటే బ్రేక్ డౌన్ అవ్వచ్చు yes very good break down avachu so because there is a dielectric medium the potential if it crosses a breakdown so you cannot use this right so the problem is power handling capability now okay so how much power you can handle so because there is always a limit the maximum say for example if in the medium the medium in the here is air ok well air ankonde air has a dielectric uh, the maximum dielectric uh, breakdown value is 3 into 10 to the power of 6 uh, vol
so there is a limit right but that limit comes from the power handling capability so because now i have to say that because what my equations are saying is it's better to take a very thin value okay illa daggara ga unna conductors ni theesukomantundi but once we understand what is a power handling capability then we can approach a conclusion right ante power handling capability bagundalante enta thickness undali alage ekku bandwidth kavalante ekkada undali so we need to compromise somewhere right so that compromise is uh, is where of course id okade kaadu there is another factor we call attenuation constant of course the other thing which we don't want to uh, over bias is uh, energy constant because even though you design where they uh, is quasi capable with good power handling capability and very high bandwidth but if your attenuation is very bad okay then the signal cannot propagate to long distances so you need to look into a guide structure which means you need to design this coaxial cable such that it has a good power handling capability it has good attenuation means the attenuation constant is low and it has a good characteristic impedance value attenuation constant takku undali power handling capability ku undali and the the maximum cut off frequency should be big so if any satisfy chese laga you need to design a line and for the such kind of lines usually have a characteristic impedance of 50 ohm okay 50 ohm of course 50 ohm kadalandi you have uh, 77 ohm and 30 ohm lines and you derive chestam we'll see but the average of it is around 50 so that is why 50 is a very famous number i told you before that meer uh, ee transmission line problem solve chesina kuda prathi sari 50 ohm 50 ohm ani maatladutu untaru and even all rf engineers and all antennas that are designed right usually they are designed for 50 ohm so why 50 why they are designed for 50 ohm ante because 50 ohm is an in- industry standard okay so it is a uh, industry standard that usually they use a 50 ohm lines or a 75 ohm lines and there is a reason why they only design lines with characteristic impedance of either 50 or 75 you will understand why we are only considering these ohms and adi until unless we don't see the power handling capability and attenuation constants we cannot understand why we are going to deal with such kind of lines so maybe this part uh, we'll talk uh, in the next session okay so that's it for today if you have any questions you can ask